As always, I'm gonna start this journey by flipping the laptop over and removing the seven screws from the bottom case. Nothing extraordinary here, everything is super simple. Once the screws are out, I use my trusty plastic pry tool and pop off the bottom case. It came off super easy like butter. With the bottom case off, we can clearly see the internals, all the organs of this baby. First thing first, I'll disconnect the battery, it's super easy, no hidden clips, just slide the connector out. The battery itself is held down by 5 screws, just don't yank it out, be gentle because the speaker cables are routed around the battery clip. Make sure to carefully pull those cables out to avoid any damages. The Wi-Fi card is replaceable with a single screw and the same goes for SSD, you can upgrade or replace it at any time. When we got this laptop, the customer mentioned it wouldn't power on and once we opened up, I immediately noticed something suspicious near the keyboard connector ribbon. There was a melted plastic cover over one of the chips. As soon as I removed that cover, it was clear the chip underneath was burned. So the motherboard is toast. Unfortunately, due to time and cost, we don't attempt repairs on damaged boards like this. It's usually more practical and affordable just to replace the entire motherboard. Even a used one will save you time and money. Next, I started disconnecting all the ribbon cables and connectors attached to the motherboard. Then I removed the cooling fans and the heatsink. Everything was pretty straightforward. The only slightly tricky part was disconnecting the fan power cable. Other than that, the heatsink popped out super easy. Important tip, if you're replacing or cleaning your heatsink, always reapply fresh thermal paste. Trust me, your laptop will thank you. Once the heatsink was out, I moved on to removing the motherboard itself. In case you are wondering where the CMOS battery is, it's by the touchpad. It's small yellow battery wrapped in a plastic and connected by black and red wires directly to the motherboard. I did notice some of the screws were extremely tight, so be sure to apply firm pressure when removing them. If you strip the screws, you are for a big ass headache. With the motherboard out, I disconnected the data board which contains the USB port, audio jack and power button. If any of them fail, you can replace the board pretty easy. Don't forget to remove the hinge mount screws as well. And finally, I removed the last few screws from the LCD hinges and detached the palm rest from the LCD screen. Looks like the touchpad can be replaced separately, but the keyboard is built into the palm rest. As for LCD, if that breaks, the whole screen assembly has to be replaced. That's all for today. Love and peace to everybody.